Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Strones and Station Advertising Tools podcast coming you, to you from RJI, the Reynolds Journalism Institute at the Missouri School of Journalism. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today at your uh, lunch hour or whatever time it is in your part of the country. Uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Stacy Wolfel. I am a the uh, director of aerial journalism here at the Reynolds Journalism Institute and for the School of Journalism. And just a little bit about myself. I'm a drone pilot. I'm a part 107 certified pilot. I teach that here at the school. I teach our students to do uh, journalism with drones and to pass the part 107 test. We've got a class, we spend time on that. I'm also the director of the documentary journalism program here at the School of Journalism and spent a long time in TV news. I spent 34 years in, in local TV and local TV news. And so know a lot about station interests and station needs uh, with that. Our other panelists here, uh, which we'll meet as we go along here, Carmaine Means, who will be joining us shortly, Meredith Neary from uh, WCAX-TV in Burlington, Andrew Carter from Let It Ply Media uh, in Kansas City, and Andrew Finlayson from Smith Geiger. And I want a uh, special thanks to Smith Geiger and Andrew, uh, our partners in this really um, from the beginning to put this webinar together and help us along that way. So uh, we're gonna start off with Andrew and uh, talk a little bit about uh, droning for dollars and making money with your station's drone. I'll just introduce Andrew a little more uh, fully here. He's the executive vice president for digital media strategies at Smith Geiger. And he has uh, plenty of drone experience of his own. He was right there at the beginning for local TV stations uh, working with WSB in Atlanta. Uh, to make them the first local station to legally use drones for news gathering. Um, his own uh, flying uh, got off to a little bit of a, a rocky start as it does for a lot of us. Uh, Andrew, you say you crashed your drone on your first three flight attempts uh, and your wife's hair was involved in this at, at some point? Well, we had one of those small drones that you fly in the house and uh, my grandsons were flying it and they flew it right into her head. She has long blonde hair. So you can imagine how that ended. <laughs> well, uh, it's all been up from there. And, and I know you've got a lot to, to fill people in. So I'll let you get started with your portion here. Yeah, great. Well, thank you again to RJI and to the University of Missouri for making this possible. For the rest of the uh, team, the panelists that are joining us today, I can't wait to hear some of the great ideas and inspiration they're going to be able to provide. I think you'll be able to walk away from this webinar and walk into your GSM, GM, or maybe even your corporate leadership team and say, I've got some ideas on how I can help us succeed in these very challenging times. Trust me, if you say I can help grow revenue and not spend money, you're gonna have the attention of the people that really matter in your organization, those people that can advance your career and keep your newsroom going during, again, these challenging times. Before we begin, I always like to put a few things out there just to sort of set some rules of the road, as it were, for the conversation we're gonna to have today. You know, I always put safety first, always, in every one of my presentations. I did a big presentation yesterday on how to do compelling live shots. And the first thing I had to walk uh, all of the people through is all the dangers of doing live shots these days, particularly if you're covering the riots and demonstrations. Well, all those same concerns apply to drones and then some because the size, the range, the speed, the power of these drones just keeps getting bigger and better. And it means that we're flying lethal, you know, lethal projectiles through the air. So we have to make sure that we're following those training protocols and safety rules that all of the media companies that I work with have in place. And that actually makes us more valuable to clients because they can trust us that we're going to do it the right way, the safe way. Then you've got to know your laws. Again, you know, we've got a, a number of drone pilots. I'm not licensed in this. I do this as a hobbyist, but I do work with plenty of people who have done the full certifications. And it's important that we bring that to the clients that we can say, we're getting you drone video that's legal. And I hear plenty of stations that have clients walking in the door and saying, I shot some drone video, which as we know is not always a good idea. So telling people that we know the laws, that we know the regs, that we've got people who pay constant attention to this, that we're gonna keep them out of trouble. I think again, as part of our value proposition that we can put before clients as we go forward. And then finally, you gotta manage this up. You know, you gotta to talk to your company. I said, truly, I do believe you can go to your GSM or GM or corporate team after this presentation and say, look, 
I've got some ideas, but you want to make sure that they're on board with this. And later on in this presentation, we'll talk about separating church and state news from production and commercial uh, work that we might do. So let's go on and have a, a little more about what we can do with drones as we go forward. I, I have a confession. Um, I'm a total geek. And you should see my office. I've got, you know, cameras and special microphones and all sorts of things because I just love to, you know, play with new technology. And when I found out there was a new technology that could fly, I was totally on board. And I've been involved in this since the early days before it was legal. Uh, before we had any rules and people were even imagining what those rules could be. And I worked with several companies on innovation projects where the question was, when we're allowed to fly drones, what are we going to do with them? I thought they would be huge for weather. I still think they could be much more impactful when it comes to weather. But you can see that there's examples up here that tell us that this has the potential to change our business for the better. So let's go on to the next slide where we can take a look quickly at what we can do as we think about the use of this compared to helicopters. Now, I get to work with a lot of stations that have their own helicopters or share helicopters. I myself have written huge checks for helicopters at stations that I was a news director at. The bottom line is you've got to think of drones as not just a miniature version of a helicopter, but as a completely new opportunity. Why? Because helicopters are extremely expensive and they're only going to get more expensive going forward. And so what we want to be able to do is position the drone as a complete complement to what we can do with our helicopters. You know, great TV stations that have helicopters make the helicopter part of their team and people identify it like they would a major anchor. Well, you can do the same thing with your drone initiative going forward. So let's talk a little bit about drones. You know, uh, the power of drones is, in my mind, so obvious that I don't need to repeat it for the people on this call, but I just will remind you that we need to be able to position it with our clients. And one of the ways that you can do that is showcase the best of your news drone footage that you've shot. You've probably got extremely compelling images that your drones have captured. And if you can put that together in a sizzle reel, and we'll show you one coming up later in this presentation from a company that owns a TV station, newspapers, et cetera, you're gonna have something that's gonna catch the eye of the client. You're gonna be able to get them excited about the possibilities of this. Now, one of the things that I like to talk about is what I call seven days a week drone use. If you're going to really make effective use of drones, you can't just keep it in the box in the closet back in the camera storage area. It's got to be planned for day after day after day. And the reason why that matters on this call is that if you can think about how you can use it, let's just say to safely do some of your high school football coverage on the weekends or coverage of sports or putting it as part of your morning show on a day in day out basis, you're going to be basically marketing the drone to your audience and to your audience that includes clients. So that when you walk in the door as the local TV station to say, we'd like to sell you a new advertising package. We've got some really great ideas. And one of those is we've got some really innovative ways that you can use drones to help sell through the story of your business. They'll already know your drone. They'll already love your drone. And as a result, they've already in effect bought into the idea of how drones could help them with their business as they go forward. So with that in mind, why make all this effort? Why spend an hour with us when you've got so much to do during these very busy times? Well, first, this does create unique local media value. When you get down to it, drones are a very local experience. Yeah, you can see drone footage from all around the world, but the drone footage that interests you the most is the stuff that's been shot nearby. I always say, show me a drone picture of my house and you've got my attention. And they are great journalistic tools. They really do allow us to tell stories in ways that we haven't been able to tell stories before. It gives you that unique view from above that always makes people think a little differently about what it is that they're looking at. It allows you to be urgent in a way that we've not been able to, even with helicopters. You know, I've seen some extraordinary storm coverage where the drone was up when the helicopters couldn't fly to show you the extent of the damage. It gets you that much closer. And that perspective 
is something that makes, again, us different. Yeah, anybody can fly a drone. Anybody in your neighborhood could fly a drone tomorrow and show you something interesting. But if we're consistently using it, it becomes part of that experience where people see us as always giving that unique perspective to some of the stories that we cover. And that gives us the ability to say, we're telling the complete story. We hear that from the audiences all the time. They don't just want part of the story, they want the complete story. And when you fly a drone, often you can get that angle that allows you to say, and we're taking a look at it from all these different perspectives. I love it because when you fly drones, you can take me places I can't go. Now we have to follow the rules of the road, make sure we're not violating any of the SEC rules and so forth, but we can take people on journeys that are like a magic carpet ride. And that builds our local brand because we can be proud of where we live. Some of the best local drone use that I've seen basically captures the beauty of where that particular station lives. Like I've seen some amazing stuff in the last week of the fall colors changing. Drones do that shot better than any helicopter or airplane could do. But let's talk about how we're gonna make money because that's really what this whole conversation is about today. So Stacy, we've got a lot to cover today. I'm just gonna sum it up this way. Sales can benefit from having your expertise. You've bought the drone. You know, I often hear from people, oh, I bought a bunch of drone equipment. Now, don't go out and buy a whole bunch. Just make sure you're using the stuff you've got. The right equipment is all that you need, not a lot of equipment. You are the skilled operator, and we can bring that expertise. You can fly through doors. You can uh, do the circle that is absolutely perfect that uh, an amateur drone operator can't do even if they practice for weeks. You've got the production experience. So you're not just selling this as one thing, you're selling it as part of a larger package that they can buy into and perhaps at no additional cost. You've got the insurance, which yes, it does matter because any reputable company doesn't want to put itself in harm's way when it comes to legal issues again. You've got the license, which again, sets you apart from all those amateurs out there that might be saying they can do the drone shot. And you can sell through that you will do it right from beginning to end because your company depends on you to do it right from beginning to end. So that's not the major selling point, but it's a great reassurance that we can offer to clients. So with that, Stacey, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, thank you. And we're going to uh, move next to being able to talk to people who are doing this every day and out there doing it. And I'll mention, if you have questions, you can click on the Q&A uh, button that's on your screen right there. Type in a question, we'll get to those either at the end, we've set some time aside for that, or we will um, ask them as we go along here. So feel free to, to jump in with questions. So we're gonna change Andrews now and go over to Andrew Carter, who's with Let It Fly Media in Kansas City. And just to tell you a little bit more about Andrew, because I've known him since he was a, a teenager, I guess, really when it comes down with it. Yeah. He's the founder <laughs> of Let It Fly Media. Uh, he began his career in TV, including as a student here at the University of Missouri, where he worked in my newsroom out at KOMU. Uh, you worked in news and sports, uh, won an Emmy Award along the way on that, just found out about another item. You're one of the uh, 20 under 30 to watch, 20 in their 20s to watch in Kansas City business right now, uh, and a Mizzou grad, as I say it here. So uh, let's talk a little bit about your company, and I'm going to play some footage uh, underneath as we talk here, but you've got uh, 13 people on staff at Let It Fly Media, and uh, four of those are pilots, and you guys fly the Mavic 2 Pros, right? Yes, Stacey. Thank you uh, for the introduction. It's nice to be uh, on this call. It's I really think the perspective here is really interesting for a lot of people listening in because, as you mentioned, I, I come from the news background. I grew up wanting to be a journalist, and that's what I, I was able to live that dream for five years. Um, with the changing landscape of digital media and everything else, uh, we've now started Let It Fly Media, which if you hear the name, you might think it's a drone company. It's actually not. It's Let Your Story Fly. We are still storytellers at heart. We tell the stories of businesses, um, athletes, leagues all around the country. And basically, we're just taking that journalism integrity to the private sector, which is why I'm really excited to talk about this, because we do use the drones a lot, though. Um, the reason we started this company way back when was my co-founder was actually a meteorologist at the same station I worked at in Oklahoma. And to your point, Andrew, he was using the drone for weather. And we decided that if we can use the drone and regular camera work that we always do, some interviews, all these other things, and combine it into a package for our client that compels them, we might be onto something. So our perspective is super unique because, like Andrew was saying, the drone has to become part of your uh, part of your arsenal. It, it isn't something that you bring out of the closet every once in a while. 
the drone has to be something you use on every shoot along with your regular cameras that you use or you bring the GoPro out. Just like all those tools you use to captivate your audiences, it has to become part of your daily use. And that's what we do. You'll see in some of this footage, we've got cameras on the ground. We're doing promos for um, different companies. But we always want to use the drone to our advantage. And what I wanted to kind of talk about uh, at the end of the day, because we're in the private sector, I think we can give good perspective on how you make money uh, utilizing the drone. So um, the drone itself is a tool to use in the story. But to Andrew's credit, the first thing I think about with a sizzle reel of a drone, that's great to use a sizzle reel um, of all these amazing footage you guys have. And you have platforms and news stations that people can trust and believe in. Just coming from the private side, every year, I would have the best of my drone shots throughout the year. And I'd find a sponsor to put their name on that video and put out on my Facebook pages. Look at the coverage we had throughout the year brought to you by whoever's roofing company in whatever city you're in and show off the best footage you have. Viewers want to see the angles you get. They want to be a part of the community, as he was saying. And you have to think about it as a tool I'll use in my story for my five o'clock hit that will make my story better and maybe help me win an Emmy award, but also a tool that you can use to utilize that footage throughout the year to package in different ways. Um, Andrew, let, I, me, let me ask you, yeah. I'm going to play, this is a spot here for um, American Airlines uh, Carter, I think. And so let the audio play it. It's going to so fade out here, but I'm interested Carter in, and literally they probably let the audio go too long here, but I'm interested in how the drone Jerry worked Williams. into this production. There we go. Yes. Now we can talk over this. So, yeah, so talk a little bit about this client and how you worked it in. We can see some shots right here. But So this was a client of ours in Dallas. You see a drone shot right there. And the first shot you see, this is Pam. She works for American Airlines. We're sitting her down like a normal interview you would see in any um, newscast and same framing, same style. We want these people to authentically talk about their experiences with our client. But a lot of these shots right here, why would we get a basic B-roll shot of the largest corporate move in America in 2019 versus a drone shot that shows off the entire building? Um, that's just a, a major impact. So I think as storytellers and journalists moving forward, um, you can always get the shot. You can get wallpaper video, you can get VOs, but the drone now, whether it's a photog coming out with you or you being certified to do it yourself as an MMJ is now an opportunity to say, how do I get this shot or tell this story better than I could have before. It's a new technology to be able to do that. Um, and as I say, new te technology, the flip side is it, it is, there's a point where it's not new anymore either. So if you're not using it already, you're already behind. And I think we're at that cross section now um, where we're using it in every story. So as you're watching this, we, we do a lot of movement in our shots, but the drone is a big part of the story. Um, and what's funny is someone will watch this story and they might say, oh, I watched that video and in their head because they see one drone shot, they think the whole video was a drone video, <laughs> not realizing a minute of this or more was interviews, cameras on the ground, but the drone captivates the audience and they'll say, hey, I saw that drone video on American Airlines. They're like, well, yeah. it's only four shots of drone in there, but that's what they remember. So um, I think for creating value and money, that's where the drone comes into play. I'm gonna to move to another clip here. And, and again, we just got a little bit of audio at the top, but. Uh, talk a little bit about wh where does the client come in with the drone? Does the client say, I want a drone, or are you guys suggesting it, or how does that work out? Let's let this just play for a second here, and then. In terms of okay. the master for the game, I mean, it doesn't really get much better than Payne Stewart. Okay, so there we hit, see lots of drone shots here. Yep, so um, to, I love how, and I'm glad Andrew started this seminar because uh, he's spot on. The client doesn't, at this point, when they work with Letterfly Media, they know it's a tool we're using every day. They don't have to ask for it. They know that when I hire you, that I'm going to get that as part of, of part of the package along with everything else. So I think um, the more you can practice, use it every day in your newscast, use it in your breaking news, create sizzle reels that go onto Facebook um, to reach your audiences in different ways, then you're going to create that ability to stand out amongst the other stations in your market. Um, and I think that's what us for a company we've been able to do. People don't look at us as a drone company. They just know they're going to get that as part of the package and it's worked really well for us. Great. All right. Um, we're going to circle back to you, Andrew, here in a little bit, but I want to go to the local TV station uh, level right now and bring on uh, at WCAX in Burlington, Vermont, Meredith Neary, who's the creative services director there. And just a little bit about Meredith, 36 years at the station. You, you haven't found any place else you want to go, it sounds like, right, Meredith? Nope. I like <laughs> uh, it here. And so you've been the uh, creative services director for 10 years. You've got a staff of four. 
and you've worked in the four P's, it looks like programming, production, public affairs, and promotion. So you have, that's a lot of local TV experience right there. Thank you. Well, we want to talk a little bit about, and again, as we kind of look at, at your station as a case study, I was um, drawn to having you take part in this because you're really working the drone into a lot of advertising that people would say, how can a restaurant, why would you have a drone shot in a restaurant? Why would you have a drone shot in a, a car, you know, a, a car repair place or whatever it might be? And so uh, what I thought we'd do is we'll go through these spots uh, and, and talk a little bit about it. Oh, I want to talk about your drone as well. So you guys fly the Mavic Pro Platinum and it has a name. Yes, it does. It's Caleb. Caleb. And all your drones have been called Caleb, it sounds like, right? Uh, this is the only, this is the first drone we've ever oh. had for creative services. Okay. The so I missed drone is called thought. something else. I got you. Oh, oh what's the new drone's name? Skymax. Okay. Mm, that's a promotable name. And here's yep. your team. You've got two pilots. So these guys work for, for whom in your station? For you? So the, one in, so the one in the front works for me. That's Abram Corbett. He's in creative services. The one in the yellow vest is Andy. He's the news drone pilot. So that's his news drone on the ground there. And that's our little drone, I think somewhere in there, but they were down there, just both of them together, just getting footage okay. one day of uh, the Burlington waterfront. So we'll talk a little bit about how the crew works here in just a minute, but let's mm -hmm. watch a spot here. And so I'm gonna start off with the restaurant spot, as I mentioned, so let's just uh, watch it and then we'll we'll talk over it here. Sure. The Billy Coast, serving up creative meals in a truly unique atmosphere, located at 86 St. Paul Street, downtown Burlington. A fun and exciting dining experience, morning, noon, and night. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, and dinner options served all day. The freshest ingredients, locally sourced. Stop in for a drink, a beer flight, a cocktail flight, a Bloody Mary or mimosa flight. Check out our weekly deals. Come in for breakfast, today or tonight. The Friendly Toast, downtown Burlington. All right, so it's going to loop silently here. So that's a great local spot. I want to go eat at that place next time I'm in Burlington. I like it, but so it's but it doesn't scream drone at me. So where did the drone work into this one? So the because there was no on cameras of anyone having to talk or anything. Using the drone made perfect sense because the drones are loud, I and mean, no matter what it is, even that small one makes a lot of noise. So it was easy to take and use it one for the outside shot there where it's just doing a nice pan effect, that was easy to, to pull off as opposed to pulling out a jib um, or a dolly. And same in the restaurant, same thing. We could fly around and get different, we get a different angle of things and even above the food without having to get out the tripods and be in the way and you know just make it, it's a very small restaurant. So uh, having to get all that big equipment in there would have been a little tight. So having the drone made super sense. Just go in and there and- was your operator flying inside or was he hand hold, holding and moving inside with it? He was flying inside, outside. And then he, I think we also had a, uh, we did have a regular camera on a tripod in there for a couple shots, but it was mostly drone. And we talk about flying inside. Here are a couple, you were able to dig up a couple of pictures. So for those yep. people who are like, fly a drone inside, well, sure. And we're gonna see that in another, another spot here coming up, but uh, yep. here's the drone yep. in a furniture store, it looks like getting some, some yep. footage. Mm -hmm. All right, let's watch another spot. It's a, another restaurant <laughs> bar spot here. And so you put some animation over it here. So we'll watch again, watch the spot and then it'll loop. Oh, Abram. We invite you to the Griffin, downtown Burlington. Come in and see a comfortable and inviting atmosphere, a relaxing neighborhood lounge, an American bistro, comfort food, Elevated. Those who know go to the Griffin on the corner of Maine and St. Paul, downtown Burlington. With free mythical creature parking outside. <laughs> so, um, so you've got uh, we've obviously a drone shot there again with animation and here. And so, what was the creative approach to putting this together? Was it did this come from the client that they needed flying shots? Did you suggest it? No, the client. Uh, he suggested the Griffin. That's what he wanted. He wanted the Griffin. He wanted the people flying across the lake from uh, Plattsburgh, which is across Lake Champlain over to Burlington to come to the Griffin. That was sort of subtle in there. And then um, it's a lot easier to use the drone to get those high up shots of places as opposed to, I mean, we couldn't get that high up shot of, well, that's obviously drone outside, but inside you can't get high up unless you're like climbing on something with your camera. So the drone makes it super easy to get that overall shot of the 
uh, location and show how you know the space of the place and how big it is and then um because it's 4k we don't have to be you know we can be farther away and make it look like it's all nice and close up so that's great to have that flexibility there to get all those shots absolutely so, and the client has yep. been so pleased with this he, he wants a sequel right he wants another one he does he wants to now do a uber eats doordash style with so the, the griffin is going to return griffin will be delivering let's watch just a, a short quick spot right here on sticks and stuff Sticks and Stuff is open at all five locations. We're open 24-7 online at www.sticksandstuff.com for all your home improvement needs, or you could order for curbside or home delivery. Please check the website for updated individual store hours. I think our, our local station people watching recognize these spots. They're making these spots. These are the clients they mm -hmm. have. And so there's a great uh, high shot. And again, it'd be hard to show that warehouse area without that vantage point. This is just a 15 second spot. So yep. I think we have two or three drone shots in just a 15 second spot. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the what's the process when you go out? So the is it your, the Abram, I think you said his name was, we saw before, yep. is he shooting all the footage on the ground as well as the drone? He's a one, one man operation there? Yes, a lot of times we are one man operations. Uh, sometimes we'll take two just, just for ease, ease, but it's, mostly one one uh, shooter editor at a, at a site at a time. So he's there, he'll have, he, he has the regular camera in the, in the van and then he's got the drone. It's also got, we also have GoPros too. So we have all kinds of, uh, all the toys that we can pull out for whatever we think needs to happen. Cause a lot of times, uh, I don't think anyone is surprised by this but we'll go to a shoot with only maybe half the script figured out. The client wants to, we do a little bit of it on the fly when we get there. So that's nice to have all the tools. That was my next question, whether, whether you were storyboarding and working this out or you're having to kind of decide what you need once you get there. Some of it is storyboarded, but rarely, rarely do we have the full storyboard because we'll get there and, you know, especially if it's a place we haven't been to before, we don't really know what we're walking into for some places for new clients especially with they're far, far away, because we're in Burlington, Vermont, but we've had like this guy, Jasmine, is all the way down in West Lebanon, White River Junction area. So he's an hour and a half away. So you're not likely to go and scout the so, location ahead of time. You're going to have to do it on the fly. No, no, no pun intended. Okay, let's watch this right. real quick. You know Jasmine Auto for collision repair, but keep us in mind for vehicle sales. We know vehicles inside and out. We're confident in the quality and reliability of the pre-owned vehicles we sell. We've got great deals you can only get at Jasmine Auto. Route 5 South, White River Junction. Okay, so another 15-second spot here. But this is, I think, you know, a lot of TV stations depend on that car business. Uh, and they're, they're doing a lot of local dealer spots. And this is maybe the easiest way to get into using drones. If you don't have that overhead real estate shot of their acres and acres of cars, it's probably not as good a spot as it can be, right? This is probably all the car spots probably look a lot like this that you do. They do, yeah. The, I mean, if we're gonna go, the minute we have a car dealer come on board and they say they want a shot of their lot, it's, it's an automatic drone. We don't even think of anything else. We're like, just throw the drone in the, in the van and go yeah. and get the shots. Okay, one it's more just here. that much easier. We're going to look, we're okay. moving away from uh, advertising. We have a, a station promo here and let's let this play. The Channel 3 News, bringing you the best coverage from all the places we call home. A commitment to our community. A commitment to you. The Channel 3 News, original, best, first in news. So you live in a beautiful part of the country. That looks like that was part of the idea behind this spot. So, and the client is you or your promotions department now. So how did the concept come together on this? So for that, that was actually the entire team, the entire creative services team we took part in all of this, um, either pretending to be the camera operator or driving the van while the drone is going on. Um, checking for traffic, all that sort of stuff. So everyone was involved in this one. Uh, and it was just easier, you know, the thought was, you know, to get those shots, to get those nice smooth shots like that, they just move like that, you know, it's either digging out the jib or the drone can do it and do it very fast, very easily, very quickly. Um, and we got this done. I mean, those shots all took different days. I mean, the one, her right there in the orchard, we realized we needed that shot. It took us maybe 15 minutes start to finish. 
grabbed her, grabbed the camera, grabbed the drone, went out in the back. That's our orchard right outside our house, uh, the station and shot it and we were done. Uh, and we were able to get that pickup shot to, to complete the promo in 15 minutes. So that's another great thing about the drone is it doesn't take a lot of setup time. So and, you're, you're doing that, everything. You're doing everything with uh -huh. one drone. Do you see expanding this or is that enough? Uh, can station We have two drone, we now have two drone pilots in the department. So both my shooters are also both certified drone pilots. Um, we, right now there's not a, a big need for it right now, but I could see in the future having to get another drone. And the great thing about that is it's not that expensive. Um, if we get the same drone, you know, a couple years newer, it'll be not that much money. Right. as opposed to brand new um, cine cameras, which we also just got, but. <laughs> I mean, yeah, for people who don't know money. the price you're talking and the drones you're using, um, fully equipped with plenty of extra batteries, things like that, under $2,000. So a lot less right. than you'd spend on a camera. All right, Meredith, we're gonna okay. come back around to you as, again later. And again, folks, if you have questions, I'm seeing a few pop into the Q&A here right now. Feel free to drop those in there and we'll have time for that. Uh, Andrew Finlayson, I'll go back to you. And we saw, uh, Meredith talked about, we saw a news shooter and a, a, a creative services shooter in the same picture there. So some people on the news side get a little bit of a, um, a bad feeling when they see something like that pop up that, oh, news shouldn't be shooting on that side. But what do you have to say about that? Yeah, first, I just want to compliment Meredith and her team on those spots. They're gorgeous, you know, and you're right. They do live in a beautiful part of the world. So why not take advantage of it and do what I call a pride mm -hmm. in place? And those promos, by the way, are some of your most effective uh, sales tools when you go out and meet with clients, because you can say, look, we use this to sell ourselves. We wouldn't do it if we didn't think it worked. And the examples that we saw yep. are great to show. So look, you know, we have to keep the lines clear. We have to be aware there are potential issues. So let's get those out of the way, make sure that everybody in the room is comfortable with this. There are two clear questions that I always have when I say, we're gonna do stuff with news that gets us close to some sales initiatives. It has to do with anything, sponsorships, uh, branded or native content, you have to have these lines. So the first thing is to be clear on the people that are involved. You know, are they purely editorial or are they people that can work both sides? Are they people who are technical and don't require daily news judgment and are not gonna present any conflicts of interest to anybody in the building or to the public at large? So in some shops, photographers are considered to be journalists and that's their primary function. Same thing with editors in some shops. They're considered to be journalists because they make daily decisions about news content. In other shops, and I could argue it in many cases that there's a growing number of uh, photographers and editors who are not making news judgments. They're not asking questions and they're not making decisions about how stories are gonna be covered. So they can work in both dimensions, but we do have to watch out for conflicts of interest and always be clear on that. And again, have some ground rules that corporate agrees with in the local uh, GSM and news director agree with. And then the other question that often comes up is, okay, the equipment can go either way, right? I think we could agree a drone that's used for news is a piece of equipment, just like a camera, just like a news car, that it could be driven and used on a commercial shoot, that the camera that shot sports on Friday night could go out and do a commercial shoot on Saturday morning. But you have to have a clear way of requesting the use of that drone so that we don't have any issues or conflicts. I think we would all agree that news comes first if there's breaking news always and breaking weather. And then finally, there's just the returning of the equipment because if somebody bought a $2,000 drone, they want it to continue to work. And we all know about shared equipment. Shared equipment is destroyed equipment. So you have to have a way for checking in and checking out uh, the drones and using it. What can solve this problem, of course, is having somebody who really works as your station's drone operator, who can be at the very beginning of their job and the equipment that they have defined as dual purpose and that way we can avoid some of the conflicts as we go forward. Stacey, you deal with ethical issues all the time. Do you wanna add any thoughts to this? Yeah, I, I mean, I think you've outlined this pretty clearly here. Um, what I've run into is people who, it's that definition of, well, I'm a journalist, so I can't, um, I can't work on something else like this. But we're starting to see as I, as I put this webinar together and frankly, just talking to ownership groups and others, 
there's, you know, we're in a time where people want to make the most of the station resources and the people are the expensive resources in any station. And so I think a lot of um, news departments, news management, station management are sitting down to talk about, you know, wh where can we draw this line? Is it a problem if our journalists end up shooting something that ends up in a spot? And so, I mean, I think that's my recommendation is get all the parties together and start talking about what makes what makes you uncomfortable, what where you are comfortable, um, and yep. knowing that we're in a time when we have to use those resources as well. Yeah, we're not going to compromise, but I think we need to rethink some of the ways that we've operated in the past. And you know, I'll just speak frankly. I've I've had some you know people call me almost on a weekly basis saying I'm worried about my job and or I've just been reduced in force and what do I do next? And one of the things that I've told everybody is don't be an expense, see if you can be a revenue generator. And for journalists, there's a number of ways they can do that. But for people who operate drones, they can very clearly become part of the growth of revenue that stations are gonna to need to fuel all the great journalism that they're gonna do going forward. So let's, again, not compromise, but have clear understandings. I think that's a great way to put it. Um, we're gonna talk um, about some shots. We've seen a number of shots in these and I'm gonna talk about some shots now. Uh, Carme Means, who we have scheduled here, is having some uh, connectivity problems and hasn't been able to join us, but luckily I have her footage and we've talked it all through. So all credit goes to her for these shots we're going to see. And you know, I hope we can get her in front of everybody at, a, at another time since she hasn't been able to join us uh, yet. So uh, she is the president of Drone Girl Photography in Chicago, and she's a photographer for CNN. She's worked for ABC and CBS and, and at the network level. And so a lot of experience behind the camera and behind the, the controls of a drone. Uh, she's been a pilot since 2016, and she was the FAA's first uh, licensed African-American woman pilot. So as I say, she's been at this since the very beginning. We've been able to do it. And, and like Andrew Carter, she's also an Emmy Award winner. So what I asked Carmaine to do and what I'll, I'll walk you through here in her absence is to pull seven different types of shots that we might talk about. And I'm gonna go ahead and play these. These are silent so I can talk over them. And so this first one is a pedestal shot and we're gonna watch her drone go up. Carmaine uh, and her company did all of this footage. So credit again to her for all of these. And you're gonna see lots of pretty parts of Chicago as we go through this. So it's a pedestal shot where the drone is slowly rising just in a, in a stationary spot going up. And we're gonna watch it come down here in just a moment as well. And so these pedestal shots, and we, we saw some of these, I think in a little bit of the, the news promotion, uh, give us a chance to get a vantage point as the drone rises up. I like to talk when I talk to our students about this, that the drones have um, invented or popularized some shots that were difficult to get before. Uh, as Andrew said earlier, uh, a drone's better than a helicopter in a lot of places. And so shots that we couldn't use so much before we have now. So that's our pedestal shot right there. Um, our next one here, we have a backing shot, which is a great way. We saw a little bit of this in the car spot. Um, I think we saw a little bit of this in some of the Let It Fly media. And so here's our operator there. That's Carmaine right there. It may be all we get to see of her. Uh, but as she uh, backs the drone away and we get the shot of the Chicago lakefront right here. So these backing shots obviously can show uh, the relationship between wherever the drone starts and how it fits into the big picture right there. So a backing shot where the drone is backing away and rising uh, to show us more and more as we go through. And there's our next one here. So these are flyover shots. This is probably the most common shot that you're going to see where, again, we've got a drone here at about 100 feet, maybe 125 feet, now a little bit lower here. But we're flying over the first one flying forward. Now another backing shot here in some parkland in Chicago here, a daisy cutter shot as we call it, coming in low over these uh, things. And again, over the fountain as we go through. She likes to fly very close to some obstacles. I'll find another one here. That fountain scared me a little bit when I saw this footage. But these flyover shots allow us, here's a pedestal shot mixed into, the, into all of them here going up to maybe 200 feet or so and back to where we started again. So these flyover shots, the, again, the car dealer where you're doing this, we saw these even on the indoor shots in the a warehouse um, and other places like that. Turn the, dr the drone to the side and fly along in a strafing shot and you can get like we saw outside the restaurant in uh, Meredith's first spot and some other things in some of the interiors there. Um, let's look now at um, just kind of a low fly through again. The snow is coming to much of the country. We've seen it in Minnesota already. And so 
uh, a nice and, and well done shot here under the limbs of these trees. Drones may be three feet off the ground, four feet off the ground, something like that. Um, it takes more skill from your operator to keep under those limbs that we see up above there and get a nice shot, but this perspective moving along faster than you can, can dolly a camera, but covering some ground in there. Just a few There's more. no track laying. <laughs> yeah, no, no laying track. If you've used mm -hmm. a dolly and track, you don't have to lay tracking. You can change your mind where you go. Here's one of the shots we talk about that sort of the drone has invented for us. Helicopters could sort of do this, but not very well, where we get a top-down shot. Here's a flyover, again, very close to the water. This worries me. I'm thinking about my own drone. But there's a top-down shot where we're looking down, sometimes straight down. That's at a little bit of an angle. Um, and those shots, we saw some in, in Andrew Carter's footage that they were using that pretty effectively. Um, it's an angle that we can't get um, really without a drone. Helicopters aren't great at those in terms of hovering to do that in one place and obviously much cheaper to get that with a drone. Um, and then I mentioned uh, Carmaine's um, desire to fly close. This, we're going to do a very close flyby with this flag. And the thing I like about this shot, although again, a little scary as I watch it right here is when you have something that close to the lens and you're moving through and you have that background there, it really gives your picture depth. You've got really three dimensions as we pass that flag and here's the skyline of Chicago beyond us. And so again, a skilled pilot, you want to practice at that, that flag's a little unpredictable. The wind is up a bit around that flagpole we can see here, but she comes in kind of at flag level and then begins to rise right here, climb just over it. And again, within 30 feet of it or so, something like that. Just a little bit of a, an interesting shot right there. So putting that in the foreground, and we saw it with the fountain, and we saw it with some of the other things where she was shooting before, uh, gives us a, a real 3D perspective of what we're seeing. So right Stacy, one thing I want to touch on on these shots, just watching these, um, you know, those are <laughs> golf course. We do a yeah, lot of golf, golf here. I'll just go ahead and talk over <laughs> yeah. this before we let it go. Yeah, but uh, it, it's really interesting because I know we're talking a lot about revenue generating and um, you know creative services and the sales side, but I can't stress enough. I think because I was a former reporter myself um, and sports anchor, I, I really understand that side of compelling compelling storytelling as well. And I really think the drone can be utilized on the news side a lot to actually then create revenue down the road. I think of HFRs hold for like in, in feature stories. Maybe it's not every day on the MMJ, but if you're doing a, a story about something going on in Chicago, or you're doing a story about farmland uh, in Virginia, and there's something attached to a story there, these are shots that can tell that story better than just a static camera shot. Mm -hmm. um, you, and I know everyone is always tied on deadline. I know there's two stories a day. I live that and all that. But I really think it needs to become part of a tool that news reporters, photographers are also using to elevate their stories and stand out in the market. Um, so it's it's like you, Meredith was saying, you know, we have that one drone right now. The one thing I could think to just make it easy is maybe there's a drone that can get checked in and checked out on the news side, depending on feature stories and sweeps, um, because I really think it makes a larger impact. Our, our clients, if they say, man, these let it fly stories do really well, we need to keep calling them. I really think a big part of that is how often we utilize, the, utilize these shots to tell the whole story. Right. You know, and the other thing I'll mention is I just think drone pilots work fast. We're efficient because our batteries don't last that long. You know, the typical, <laughs> we're, we're hitting the 30 minute battery mark uh, these days, but we were working with 15, 20 minute batteries before. Yep. So we're efficient. We get up there and get the shot and get back down because we, the batteries, we have to change batteries. So it's an efficient way to get things done. All right. So uh, again, sorry, Carmaine could not join us here, but we at least got the benefit of her beautiful work there and, and thank her for providing that. Um, Andrew, I'll come back to you um, for one last thing before we get to questions. And that is, we've talked about what the drones can do. We're seeing a lot of, of nice footage here. We've seen some great examples in, in local TV spots and other production. So how do we figure out the right people to, to reach with us? Yeah. So, you know, look, we have to be frank. There's a lot of competition out there in the drone space. Uh, almost anybody that offers some level of photography services locally, I see wedding photographers uh, offering drones as part of their package these days. But you again bring unique uh, credibility and capabilities to this. So what we need to do is an honest evaluation of the business prospects. I don't want it just to be seen through the lens exclusively of, hey, we're just going to add some really nice video to our existing uh, videos that we are doing for clients. We need to think of this as a new capability that we can build a business out of. 
I think that local TV could actually have a meaningful, not huge, I'm not going to argue that, but a, a decent amount of revenue if we were to think about all the other ways that local drone operators are used. So what are some of those? Well, you can do some research and just look around your area because it varies depending on the part of the country and see who's flying commercial drones in your region. Uh, you'll learn a lot from what they're offering to their clients and who they're talking to. It could be that they're offering survey and real estate services. It could be that they're offering inspections, which is a whole category of drone flying these days. Uh, there are people who use it in agriculture. And again, it's not exclusively for getting video. It's really more of a tool to see what the reality is on the ground these days. And if we want to think about new revenue, we've got to think about these new possibilities as we go forward. Then you've, of course, got to look at what the local agencies and production houses offer. You know, sometimes they're friends of the station. We always like to be friends with local agencies. Sometimes they're people that we could compete with. So we have to figure out what our package is. And I think Andrew made a great point. You know, if you fly it every day and you use it in every one of your shoots, it'll be a signature of your particular commercial production team that'll set you aside from the others. When they go to look at the promo reel and see what they are offering at that production house versus what you're offering, trust me, the drone footage will make you stand out as you go forward. Um, there are plenty of independent operators out there. There's lots of people who are trying to do drones as a side hustle, uh, especially given the economy these days. I would argue that some of those could be friends of yours, especially if they're good operators and they've got the right licenses. I know some TV stations that have just decided it's not worth the hassle of getting their own operator. They want to have people on speed dial that they can use. And if you issue those people a challenge to say, look, let's talk about how we can work together to bring in new clients for both of us. You'd be surprised at how many creative ideas they have about how they can use your strengths to help them grow their business and you can use their strengths to grow your business as you go forward. And, and, Andrew, real quick, I have a yep. great story on that. Um, so my wife is actually the morning meteorologist at uh, 41 Action News here in Kansas City. So when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year, we were hired by the Kansas City Sports Commission to cover the Chiefs championship parade. So we had nine cameras on the ground. We did everything along the route, but we also had the drone in the air to show the Kansas City crowd at the parade. Well, because, well, in our case, it's because of my wife and I knew the station and all that, but this should be thought about more. Think about companies like us who are also at events because we had that relationship. I then handed all my VO of the drone footage to the NBC station that night and they aired that their drone footage that no other station had because they had that open relationship with us. They didn't look at us as competitors. We worked together. And the beautiful thing for us is we knew where their cameras were along the route. So we were able to do our job and not get in front of their cameras either. So I think that's just a perfect example of news organizations um, coming together with independent operators and companies in their town to actually both thrive. Absolutely. You know, I have a, a whole presentation I do on user generated content with a drone section because on any given big breaking news story, there's probably drone footage from somebody. And yeah. especially big storms, you're gonna find that there's footage they got that you don't have. Now, whether or not they shot it right and all that, we'll leave that for another discussion. But the point is having those partnerships, those friendships can make a huge difference. I think that real estate is one of the underappreciated areas because local TV traditionally hasn't been where you go and put an ad for a house that's for sale. But almost every house that's sold today has to have a video or compelling pictures to go along with it. And that's a make or break for many real estate agents. Why we're not doing more in that area is a good question that we could pursue because that again is an ultimately local, local business that we could be involved in. And then there are plenty of other businesses, as I mentioned, that we should be expanding our reach into and saying, look, we have this drone. What could we do for you? You'd be amazed at how many of your current clients when they're asked that question could come up with answers like, oh, well, we're doing a charity golf event this weekend. We'd love to have a sizzle reel for it, or we'd like to do something. It'll never appear on your station's air, but it could be invaluable for deepening the relationships that you have with clients. And I'm gonna give you an idea that I hope you'll find value in. You should dedicate one hour of drone time a week to making friends with people to reaching out, for example, to the local big sports franchises and saying, look, we're not going to charge you. We want to do this and show it to you and then see if you can forge a business relationship or at least a good friendship going forward. And then finally, you're going to have to look at what others charge because you're going to want to make this not a value add, please don't do that, but actually something that you put as a line item. So I'm going to not put Andrew on the spot here, but do you break out 
um, drones or is it simply integrated into the whole package? Um, it's pretty, it's integrated, but if a client asks for a statement of work or a proposal, we will show in that proposal out of our producer on the ground, our storyteller on the ground, all the equipment we're using, we do price that out. Now I will say the drone is a very small price of our overall proposal because we know of independent competitors that will charge very cheap to go out to a, a real estate location. Um, but we do show off that there is a, there is a price to use the drone, but I think the overall reason people come back is how we use it, not necessarily what we're charging for it. Exactly. Don't make it about price because you're always going to lose against cheap, cheap drone yep. operators. Make it about the quality and the consistency of the work that you do. So Stacy, I think we've covered the big ones. I've got one last one that's really been transformative for some TV stations. And that is set a Google alert for the names of your towns and the word drone. You're going to be amazed at how much stuff it's going to kick out. You know what a Google alert is? It's going to send you an email saying there was a new YouTube video posted that used the word uh, Burlington and drone. And you're going to find out how other people are using drones. More importantly, you're going to be inspired. And that's what I'm always looking for. Not to imitate, but to be inspired by what I see from other drone operators around the world. Yeah. Stacy? That's a great tip. The, yep. uh, we've got a, well, a sizzle reel here. We'll watch if you want to you want to talk over this or just well i think that's the thing we should talk over it and and you know i welcome andrew and meredith joining in on this because this is a sizzle reel from form communications if you're not familiar with them they're a very interesting company um, that's uh, based up on the farmlands and they use drones and they have this as part of their agency pitch so again they're a tv and digital and newspaper they're, they're just a very diverse small media company but this is gorgeous stuff and it makes you want to do business with them. And I'm sure some of this is stuff they might have shot for news. I don't know. Um, I did reach out to them, but I didn't hear back. But I just felt like this was stuff that you could actually walk into any client's office and say, look what we can do, and then tell the story with this. And they do some really interesting business-focused videos where they tell the stories of local businesses. And if you want to make a local business look like a hero, and I love to talk about how you can make any business feel like a hero, drone shots give you that capability. So Meredith, Andrew, I want to just sort of bounce off of you what you think a, a great drone sizzle reel looks like. Meredith, you can go first from your perspective. Oh, that, that was really nice. That was some great stuff there. Uh, we actually started the, the way we pitched our drone to our sales team was my drone pilot, Abram, made our own sizzle reel where he went and got all of the stuff that he did, you know, the night shots of Burlington, the, you know, all the nice shots of Burlington waterfront, the station, even all these different shots and made our own sizzle reel. And that's what we have. The salespeople have that they can then sell to the clients for us. So sizzle reels are great. Uh, it was awesome. I also wanted to just say that we actually have two drones at the station. We have one for news specific for some news and one for creative services. Perfect. So we do have two separate ones and it does work great for news stories. We have two different towns. One is Burlington, one is Newport where through some mismanagement of stuff, there's big, huge holes in the center of these towns where buildings were destroyed and not rebuilt. Nothing got that across the viewers than seeing that from above. Right. So cool. very cool to tell a story that way. So everybody watching, we're in the question Measuring. period here, obviously, and I've got yeah. some questions that you all have submitted, but feel free sure. to go to the Q&A button on your screen there and you can add yours in. So first question is, um, how do you use a drone safely indoors? Uh, the, this is Shelly writing, says, I have an Inspire 2, which is quite large. I think that that's a very large drone would be tough to use mm -hmm. in a restaurant setting, but how do you work, how do you take care of safety in those indoor shoots? Uh, Meredith's probably talking to you since we saw this. Uh, wow, yeah, the, there. That, yeah, that is a bigger, that's a bigger drone. Um, so <laughs> safely, say indoors, we have, um, we always have a second person watching the drone. So the drone pilot is watching what's in the lens. You have a visual observer who's watching where the drone is. And since we're usually not recording audio, it's very easy for, I've been, to, I've done that a few times where it's just saying, hey, watch out, you're like a foot away from the wall. And then they, okay, you know, they'll figure that kind of stuff out. So that's how we fly safely indoors is yeah. having a second set of eyes that is just there to watch where the drone is at all times. We do, uh, FAA regulations prohibit flying over people unless they're part of the 
production basically. And so right. you can, you are flying over some people look like they're maybe not quite over them, but they were part of the production the people you had in yeah. to do that. So we don't fly over people who aren't part of the production. Um, Peter asks, uh, what sort of legal issues have any of you faced? And he's got some specific questions about private property and such we can get to, but Andrew Meredith, any legal issues you faced over drone use? From my perspective, I'll just get in there. We're, we're yeah. kind of fortunate because uh, we don't we don't have to deal with all the journalism side of things. Um, normally, our clients are hiring us, and they're okay with the drone being wherever we need it to be. Um, but I think it's a great question. I, I actually am very curious to Andrew Meredith how you guys handle that um, in a news setting. So Gray Media Group, who owns WCAX, has a whole system called they they've they're using a system called Skyward. And then we also have our legal department. So we have releases that we have to give when we're doing a, a commercial production. On the news side, I don't know, but we all have to use Skyward, which is how we track everything that we, every time those drones go off, it's in Skyward. It's a, I guess, a way to track everything that we've done in case there's any legal issues that come up. So yeah, we use Skyward as well. Every time we yep. go up, we say when we're gonna fly, how long yep. and when it comes down and yep. yep. That's the so, thing. We're, we're entering into a world where the drones are, you know, capable of knowing where they are in relationship to restricted areas. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps with some of these issues, but it doesn't solve all of them. And again, we can't give legal advice on this call because we're not lawyers and we don't want to pretend to be. <laughs> nope. But if you can, you know, have a drone operator who's done the full certification, they'll know when they're getting into any area where there might be a question. Right. And for yep. news gathering purposes, some of the same rules that apply on the ground apply up in the air. So don't right. go yep. into people's private property. Just yep. don't. <laughs> it's, a it's a changing right. landscape and the states are, you know, there's federal regulations, of course, but the states are enacting their own. And so any certified or professional pilot is going to check all of the state and local regulations before he or she flies so that uh, it can be done right. Uh, let me ask, Andrew, I'll turn to you here, Andrew Carter. Um, how does Let It Fly Media sell drone work to prospective partners um, and how receptive have they been to, to that sort of drone work? Yeah, and, and I think that's kind of touching on what I was saying earlier. I, I really think we sell drone work as part of the toolbox. And because it's part of the toolbox, they're excited to see the end product um, and, and they like seeing where's the drone being used and where's the drone not being used. Um, something as far as what we're seeing and maybe the sports side of news stations, and we saw some high school football stuff in there where it's really interesting is we are using the drone in sports all the time. It makes sense for almost every sporting event, every sports team, um, golf especially. So whether it's a client that has a charity golf tournament and wants us a promo around that from your creative services department, that's a great sport to use it every single time. Um, but it's funny, the sizzle reel is huge. Once you tell a, a client why you're using the drone and why you have it, get that sizzle reel together and show the next person and the Andrew and Meredith's uh, credit and what they mentioned. And I think we've all seen is once you have the sizzle and you show it off, there's very few people who say, I don't want that. Um, so it just is part of the toolbox and, and we keep using it. Yeah, yep. absolutely. You know, the, the barrier to entry for com competition is pretty low here. Um, and how can we make ourselves stand out uh, separate from that independent operator who has a nine to five job someplace, but bought a drone and now wants to use it to make a little money on the weekend. I think any, any of you can answer that probably. Well, I, 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 think, I, I, I think that's relationship based. I think they're gonna wanna work with the news station rather than the random person down the street. And that's, that's just my two cents. <laughs> yeah, I think it's the credibility that we bring, just you know, the connection they have to what is a well-established community voice and that, you know, when we're doing commercials, really what we're doing is creating a relationship between the audience that we have and the business that we're working for. That's what local TV is at its core. Bottom line is, is that if we can distinguish ourselves with the quality of the shots uh, at the way that we are experts in using it, that's why I'm such an advocate of flying every day because mm -hmm. it's, it's like any other skill. It's not until you do your 50th live shot that you're even slightly comfortable. You know, it's your hundredth live shot that you're confident. I think the same rule applies to flying drones. You know, the first 10 times you're flying it, you're a nervous wreck and you should be because I put one into a tree. <laughs> but then you start to get that level of confidence that makes you really a, a great operator. And we've seen some gorgeous shots here, 
you know, that change the way that you think about uh, the product and the business that you're talking about. Right. I'd like to move though beyond just that one pedestal shot of the uh, car lot. I see that all the time. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, part of that, yeah, Andrew, it's funny. Um, I always tell our drone operators too, you, you know, you have a drone and you're flying, you automatically go, do I need to be really high in the air? Um, we use the drone so many times a foot off the ground mm -hmm. for just a different angle that is so compelling and so interesting and gives a different perspective. Um, it is a jib. It is, it is a dolly. Um, it can be used in so many ways. It doesn't have to be high off the ground and talk about, time uh, management, efficiency, and saving money, putting a drone up for one foot and then getting a shot and you're done. Um, that's another thing I'm always telling our team is don't, don't look at this as just something that has to fly. This is a camera and it's a tool that can be used from all different angles. That's, that's a great segue into what I have up there now. So at that uh, share link site right there, we have pulled together a lot of examples, more than we could show today. So you, you'll see some of the things if you want to go back and look at Meredith's spots, they're there. But on that page, and I'll click over here so you can see, whoops, click over so you can see the look of it. Oh, I lost my image there. But basically on that page, you'll find uh, a number of links uh, showing uh, a lot of examples we couldn't get to today. So if you want to see doing cars without just that high pedestal shot over the lot, there are people doing that there. If you want to see people using drones with the, the rotors turned off and just carrying it through a house to do a real estate walkthrough. You can see that there. So there's lots there. And we would invite you to add some links to this. If you have things that you're doing that you want to share, go ahead and send it to me and we can have those um, added to the list right there. So finally, I'll just go over and kind of thank our, our host here, which is RJI. You can see we will post this to RJI's YouTube page. And so that link will go up on the, uh, the share link spot as well. But um, RJI Online uh, is putting on webinars like this all the time. And so uh, it's a place to bookmark and check back on. And again, a special thanks again to Smith Geiger and to Andrew for uh, coming to us, frankly, at the beginning and asking if we'd be interested in putting this on. And we've worked together on this since, since the summer doing that. And thanks to, to Meredith and Andrew Carter as well and to Carmen, who again contributed, even though we couldn't see her face here today, uh, thank her for her contribution to this as well. So we're t TV people and we went one minute over, so shame on us, but thanks everybody for joining us and uh, have a good afternoon. <laughs>